So where I like to start is a conceptual framework that I think is helpful to have. And the framework is, there's the prediction system. So this is kind of the model that makes predictions. It's not just the TensorFlow code or the PyTorch code. It's also code around it. So maybe code that processes input data uh, for consumption of the, for the model. Uh, the network itself that has the trained weights. And then the ability to make predictions. Maybe there's something else you have to do, like threshold on confidence or something. To generate the prediction system, we have a different code base. Well, it doesn't have to be a different repository, but it's a different set of files that we call the training system. The goal of the training system is to process raw data, run experiments, uh, manage the results. And when we train the prediction system, the goal of the prediction system is to be deployed somewhere, uh, and that's known as serving. So the serving system actually serves up the predictions. It uh, can scale to demand. And uh, when we think about what data is used for the different systems, the training and validation data is used in conjunction with the training system to generate the prediction system. But at production time, we have a different data set, which is the production data that we've never seen before. And we can't, by definition, see it before we put the model in production. That's the data that the serving system is going to see. To test this whole arrangement, we have a set of tests. So the prediction system should be tested by functionality tests, which really just test them on some number of important examples, uh, a set of examples. And I think the goal here should be that we're able to run it while we're developing, so maybe less than five minutes. And the shorter, the better here. The goal is really to catch code regressions as we develop our model, change our processing of the data, change our prediction serving code. We want to be able to catch those very quickly without waiting you know, hours for the model to retrain. On the other hand, validation tests <clears throat> can test the prediction on a larger validation set. So not just a few examples, but maybe millions of examples. Here we start from process data, uh, whereas in production and functionality tests, we want to start from the form of the data that the system will actually see in production, so maybe if we have an image model, we'll start with actual images in functionality tests. But in the validation test, we might start with some kind of data frame that already has the images preloaded. This should run in uh, hopefully less than an hour, but just some number of minutes or hours. And the goal here is to run it every time we push code, just to make sure we didn't regress the model performance. The training system should have its own tests, and the tests here really should test the full pipeline. So going from the raw form of the data, um, we start as raw as possible. It might take a while to actually run the whole thing. So it should run in less than a day so that we can run it every day, ideally, but not necessarily in less than an hour. And the goal here is potentially to catch upstream regressions. So if something changed about the data source that you're taking, you should catch it here, or if something um, if you upgraded your dependencies, and now the prediction system is actually not affected, because maybe TensorFlow version didn't go up, but maybe the Pandas version went up, and now your data looks slightly different, <clears throat> that, can get, that will affect the model next time you train, but it won't get caught by the existing test we have unless we test the whole training system. For the production data, we don't usually talk about tests. We talk about monitoring which means that we want to know when <clears throat> our system <clears throat> goes down, if it has any errors, and potentially if the distribution of the data that it predicts on is shifting. So we want to catch service and data regressions here. 